All right. So um, let's begin with a uh, short meditation today. I invite you to close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. Uh, we just had a prayer, so maybe we'll just make this meditation an extension of that prayer. <laughs> Let's just uh, tune ourselves to the silence for a few moments. By taking a couple of breaths, let go, uh, take a couple of long, deep breaths and attune yourself to the silence. Silence is the word of God. Because everything arises out of that. And returns to that. All we have to do is just be quiet. Be still and wait if ever there is a need in any way. Just wait. Delegate authority to that. That presence and that power. ever creative, ever new, always present. Trust that authority, that silence, and wait. It may come in a few seconds, it may come in a day, it may come in a week, it may come in a year or in many years. It doesn't matter, just wait. Just be patient. Listen for your intuition. Relax and open. And invariably, guidance is there. Assurance is there. Awareness is there. Presence is there. Love is there. Light is there peace is there whatever is needed just necessary for us to be quiet still calm the mind you might need to go away from the busyness to be alone on your, uh, on your in another room or another outside the house, or go for a walk, get away from the busy mind, and just be still. Everything you need is there. You ever, whatever you need, at any time, anywhere, it's there.
just what's necessary is the calm mind open to the heart delegate authority to that for that is what it provides whatever is needed at any given time thank you god for providing this awareness for us at, at all times it allows us to be happy relaxed joyful and filled with energy thank you god amen all right so um The theme in uh, we're in my church here in California has been interdependence, inter interdependence. This past month, a very challenging theme for me, uh, because realistically, the only thing we can really depend on is the eternal. And so, what does interdependence mean? Hmm. Interesting question. Uh, Today's talk is about how delegating authority to others opens the way for us to experience harmonious interdependence with others. To delegate is defined as to entrust control, responsibility, or authority to someone. Entrust control. Oh, that's really easy, isn't it? <laughs> Alan Watts said these words, which is kind of the inspiration, really, for the talk, these words of Alan Watts. It's kind of a mysterious statement. He said, the more you relinquish power and trust others, the more powerful you become. Somehow or, or other, you are able to decide and control things more harmoniously if you delegate authority. And so I read that and thought, wow, that's a challenging statement. What does that mean? I mean, what does that mean? It almost feels kind of counterintuitive. And so I was driving home uh, a couple of weeks ago from traffic. You guys know what traffic is like on 50, right? You guys know what traffic is like. I remember when I was there, 50 was bad, but I heard now it's even really ridiculous. But I was driving uh, in Santa Cruz and the cars were going like zero miles an hour, just way slow. And I need to get home. And you know, that feeling you want to get a car moving in front of you. And so I was meditating on this theme about delegating authority. And so I, it came to me to say, I, uh, to the people, the cars around me, the people in the cars around me, uh, I delegate authority to all of you to find the way to your destination in a timely manner, right? And then when I sort of gave up that control to need to get moving faster and delegating authority to all those around me for them to reach their destination in a timely manner, then all of a sudden I was able to relax and be patient. I, uh, I didn't quite get this principle yet, but but... I kind of began to understand it experientially, just to give up the control and just give them others the control to find their own way. Stop fighting. But the key thing that helped me understand this principle from that Alan Watts taught is from Meister Eckhart. Now, Meister, I'm not talking about Eckhart Tolle. I'm talking about Meister Eckhart. He was a uh, a mystic. Uh, in the uh, Catholic Church, but he was kind of defrocked because uh, of his mystical ideas a little too much for the church. Uh, in the 14th century, the mystic, he was a mystic. He said, God expects only one thing of you, that you come out of yourself insofar as you are a created being. And here are the words, let God be God in you. Come out of yourself as a created being and let God 
be God in you. So whenever we feel stress and tension or anxiety out of control, you can make a shift in perception. Instead of engaging in the futility of pushing against that which you have no control, trying to force others to change, open up and delegate authority to others. Grant authority first to God in you, and then grant authority to God in others around you. That's the key thing. Grant authority to God in others around you. I, uh, it's like, I let God grant his authority through me. I let God be God in me. First of all, I let God be God in me. Secondly, I let God be God in you. I let God delegate his authority through you. The more you, we relinquish power and trust God to grant his authority through us, then, then delegate his authority through others, the more powerful you and I become as God's instrument. We become God-like. Because think about it. God grants us authority, right? He grants us authority. When we're create, when we're born, you know, in this life, God grants us authority to live our lives, to be creative. Only people are the ones that put the hammer down and make control of people, not God. If there are okay, for example, if there are six people who need to accomplish a task, and let's say there are workers you have hired to plant trees in a large property. Okay, each one is instructed to do specific plantings in specific areas in this garden. Okay, now you can delegate, designate authority to all six. You may have to supervise to see if the workers understand their jobs to accomplish. Yet the key thing is your attitude, that after you set them to their tasks, you relinquish power and trust them to accomplish the work. This is the key thing. We are not to see the three workers as like three separate pieces of a pie. That's not delegating authority. That's not trusting, but trying to control each of the three, like hovering over them, over them with a whip. It's like seeing each as one third plus one third plus one third equals one. And this is called micromanaging. Instead, we see each one as one. One plus one plus one equals one. I let God be God in you. I delegate authority to all three workers by letting God delegate his authority through them to accomplish the task. This is true interdependence. We don't complete the other person. We don't, we, we augment each other. We supplement or augment each other. You make to make greater by adding to it. First, let God grant his authority through you. Let God be God in you. Affirm, I let God be God in me. Then secondly, I let God delegate his authority through you to others. Affirming, I let God be God in you. I let God delegate his authority through me to others. Before we're able to delegate authority to others, we first have to be authoritative, not authoritarian, authoritative. We have to have self-confidence. We have to be able to let God be God in us first. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I grew up in Ohio, uh, I was young. When I was young, uh, Terry talked earlier about how he was into different things. I, I, I was into sports when I was growing up. I wasn't as much into girls. I was into sports. Yeah. Uh, it, and uh, so uh, football and basketball, baseball. But in, in football, I, of, of all the guys in my class, I was the quarterback because I could throw the ball really well. I, I could pass the ball well. And I... I remember in eighth grade we had our, we play football and we make we come together and play games and I was always the quarterback, but then I got into ninth grade and in ninth grade an organized football, high school football, freshman football, uh, I tried out as quarterback, and um, 
I thought I'm the quarterback. Well, I found out I wasn't a quarterback. There's a new kid who came to town. His name was John Marsh. Now, the thing is, John was the president of our class, right? John knew how to delegate authority. He was the president of our class. I had no such experience. I had no such skills. And so he knew how to be to delegate authority to all the players as a quarterback. I didn't know how to do that. I just knew how to throw the ball. You know, I didn't know how to delegate authority. He did. And uh, I ended up being a wideout receiver. But the point is, uh, I learned that big lesson that the quarterback, being a quarterback of a football team requires that a skill and ability to delegate authority. And, uh, you know, spiritually speaking, let's move on to this. Uh, Jesus delegated spiritual authority to others. He delegated spiritual authority to others. In the book of John, it is written that he once said to a mixed group of people, uh, followers and opponents, he said, I and the Father are one. He said that term. His Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. And, but Jesus said to them, he said, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? And they said, we are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. And Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I have said to you, I have said, you are gods. This is actually from the 82nd Psalm. He was quoting the, the, the Torah. He was quoting from the, the Psalms. And the, and the Psalms, the quote from Psalms is, I said, you are gods. You are all sons of the Most High. So Jesus as master was modeling oneness with God, with God consciousness to his opponents. He was modeling oneness with God consciousness to his opponents by reminding his opponents, you are gods. He was delegating God's authority to them. He was essentially saying, let God be God in you. Let Yet there must be openness in order to receive and be transformed by this truth teaching, because there was so much bias against Jesus. You have to remember, Jesus was like a space alien to these folks. He, he was a realized master amongst those who were not realized. And so he, and people, the, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were jealous, and, but they obviously very resistant, didn't want to be told what to do when he called them hypocrites. They were hypocrites, and but they didn't honor him and didn't respect him. Ellen Watts also said, this seems a sort of paradox to say this, but the principle of unity of coming to a sense of oneness with the whole of the rest of the universe is not a, to try to obtain power over the rest of the universe. That will only disturb it and antagonize it and make it seem less one with you than ever. The way to become one with the universe is to trust it. And there's a story I'm going to conclude the talk with today. It's from, you've probably heard it before, about a monastery of, of aging monks. And uh, over time, uh, young people stopped going to visit the monastery and contribute to the monastery. And uh, all these monks were getting older, and there wasn't any energy left in the monastery. And people, they, the monks were sort of unhappy. They were just being like, able to just barely get along. And one day, uh, a monk, sort of an enlightened monk from another monastery, happened to visit there. And um, he saw the predicament they were in, that they needed a revival. They needed to be reborn. Their spirit needed to be uh, reborn. And so he, he said, uh, he thought to himself, and he was guided by his inner voice. And he said to them, do you know there's something I know about your monastery? And they said, what? Christ dwells in your midst. Did you know that? That Christ dwells in your midst. They said, really? Yeah, it's true. Christ dwells in your midst. And the monks started to say to each other, 
Did you know? Wonder who it might be. Is it, is it, is it, is it him? Is it him? Are you the Christ? Are you the Christ? You know? And uh, so they began to serve each other, not knowing whether they were the Christ or not, but possibly they might be. Of course, we all know in unity that uh, we're all the Christ, but we're also recognizing and we're open to discover that which we already are, to realize that we are the Christ. And so it's a process of, of uh, recognizing and discovering and rediscovering. And so the whole monastery became a lie because they were all in this question of, oh, is he the Christ? Is he the Christ? Is he the Christ? The monks discovered a kind of collective interdependence. Collective interdependence is like a beautiful tapestry of souls woven together, a mysterious tapestry of oneness. In this consciousness of collective interdependence, it's easy to grant equal authority to ourselves and everyone else because there is no separation. Any, it's a kind of indivisibility that we're all one in this woven tapestry. We're all connected this interdependence. There really is no separation. And yet it's, it's, it's a mysterious weaving like a tapestry. So in closing, remember, first, let God grant his authority through you. Let God be God in you. Affirm, I let God be God in me first. Then secondly, let God delegate his authority through you to others, affirming, I let God be God in you. I let God delegate his authority through me to others. Amen. So it is. Grow for it.